Hi, my name's Shad, and I'm going to take you inside of a meeting that I recently had with industry experts. As you might know, I teach software development and computer science at Grand Canyon University. And twice a year, we invite experts from the community, which means employers, to come talk to us about what they are looking for in our candidates, our students, our graduates. So what skills do we teach that they really think are important? And so I summarized the meeting notes here to see what you think your employers are going to ask of you if you're one of those people looking for a job. So here's the skills that they asked us to emphasize. Things that they know that they are going to use on a daily basis. So make sure that you graduate with these skills. First of all, they said the basics of data structures and algorithms. Now, this doesn't simply mean that you're able to take some kind of a test and solve an algorithm problem. I think the emphasis here was that as you are a programmer on daily life, are you able to use the tools that are given to you in your language? Let's assume that you're working with Java or C Sharp or something relevant to the job market. And are you able to take those uh, data structures that are built in, such as a dictionary or a hash map or an array list? And can you differentiate what they're supposed to be used for compared to just a simple array? And so this would result in more efficient code. And so being able to explain why you're choosing certain parts of a language or using a data structure is really important to making your code efficient. And so they really appreciate students and employees that can utilize these tools effectively. Secondly, they say a big push in what they're doing is with machine learning and artificial intelligence. Now, once again, let's talk about what the difference is between knowing a theoretical use of it and a practical use. So it's nice to be able to theoretically describe machine learning and supervised learning and unsupervised learning and all those things. But more important, can you take a library or take a tool and integrate it into your application? And so every company in the world is working on machine learning and AI solutions. And so making sure that you have at least used them as part of an application is a really important facet for our employers to look for when they're looking for hiring people. So this next skill pretty much created an audible amen from everybody in the room. In-depth debugging skills, which means that are you able to understand a computer system in depth? And so everything we always work with breaks, right? And so the most heroic employee on their team is the one that says, I know what's going on. And so an in-depth knowledge of which service is servicing other services or how integration between two systems has been developed. This really only comes from experience. But if you are a type of learner that is able to debug code, to look at computer systems that are relating to each other, able to find solutions, then you are a super valuable person on their team. And so I think we spend, what, 70% of our time debugging things and 30% maybe creating things. And so the ability to find the root cause of a problem is really what they consider important. The next feature that came up as super important was what they call functional programming. So functional programming is a little bit different than object-oriented programming. You'll see it in your practical use when you're working with, uh, like C Sharp has the link uh, procedures, or you might have arrow functions, or in Java they're called streams. In JavaScript, you're going to have your three friends map and reduce and filter. And so these types of anonymous functions that uh, are generating one line of code and creating like for loop results are super important. So if you haven't seen functional programming and you looked at these different features here, then you should probably Google some things. As a matter of fact, I'll give you a link to a tutorial on functional programming so that you'll understand some of these features. Now, in my experience, I've seen this with my JavaScript programming. And so that's just like baked into the language and how things work. So if you're a React developer or Angular or Vue, any kind of a JavaScript front end framework is going to have functional programming everywhere. Uh, Java and C Sharp have these as integral parts of their language now, but they didn't originally. And so if you haven't looked back and seen this from several years of programming, maybe it's time to brush up. Another example of functional programming where you see it all the time now is in mobile development. So both 
um, Google and Apple have completely revamped their approach to writing software using now functional programming. So in Android, we're using the Kotlin language and the new, uh, somewhat newish framework called Jetpack Compose is all about functional programming. So it looks more like React than it used to. And also, so in the Apple world, in the iOS world, uh, Swift is now using functional programming as well. And so it's worth your time, if you haven't seen this before, to brush up and to fill in a knowledge gap because the employer said so that this is important to them. So the last feature that they would like all of our developers to have some experience with is cloud computing, which simply means hosting your app on a server somewhere. But cloud computing has become a more complex issue than just finding a server and uploading your code. Cloud computing works with Docker and with Kubernetes, Azure and AWS and Heroku and other services like that. And so the more experience you have of deploying your apps and managing them and tweaking them for performance, the better. So if you'd like to become a software developer, then make sure you subscribe to my channel and I'll put here a link to a playlist where you can learn how to use the Spring Boot framework, for example, to develop full stack web applications. So we'll see you in class and thanks for subscribing.